Welcome to a lesson on the existence and uniqueness of the Laplace transform. When does the Laplace transform exist? A function f of t is of exponential order as t goes to infinity if the absolute value of f of t is less than or equal to m times e to the power of ct for some constants m and c for sufficiently large t, say for all t greater than t sub zero for some t sub zero. The simplest way to check this condition is to try and compute the limit as t approaches infinity of f of t divided by e to the power of c t, where again c is some constant. If the limit exists and is finite, usually zero, then f of t is of exponential order. So let's consider the functions f of t equals two e to the t and g of t equals t squared and determine if they're both of exponential order. We'll also use c equals two. So for f of t, we have the limit as t approaches infinity of two e to the t divided by e to the two t because we're dividing the bases of the same, we subtract the exponents. This gives us the limit as t approaches infinity of two e to the negative t, which gives us the limit as t approaches infinity of two divided by e to the t, which does equal zero because the numerator is the constant two, the denominator is increasing that bound. And therefore, f of t equals two e to the t is of exponential order. And now let's try g of t equals t squared, shown on the right. We have the limit as t approaches infinity of t squared divided by e to the two t. Right now the limit is in the indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity, and therefore we can apply L'Hopital's rule by taking the derivative of the numerator and denominator. This gives us the limit as t approaches infinity of two t divided by two e to the two t, which is still in the indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity. We apply L'Hopital's rule again, which gives us the limit as t approaches infinity of two divided by four e to the two t, which in this form we can see the limit is equal to zero, and therefore g of t equals t squared is also of exponential order. And now let's look at the theorem on existence. Let f of t be continuous and of exponential order for a certain constant c. Then big F of s equals the Laplace transform of f of t is defined for all s greater than c, which means in our case, the Laplace transforms exist for f of t and g of t for s greater than two. The existence isn't too difficult to see. Let f of t be of exponential order, that is, the absolute value of f of t is less than or equal to m times e to the ct for all t greater than zero. For simplicity, we have t sub zero equals zero. Let s be greater than c, or in other words, s minus c is greater than zero. By the comparison theorem from calculus, the improper integral defining the Laplace transform of f of t exists if the following integral exists. We have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of negative st times m times e to the power of ct dt. For the first step, we can factor out the m, and then multiplying where we have a base of e, we add the exponents, and if we factor out a negative, we have e to the power of the opposite of s minus c times t. To integrate, we perform u substitution, which I've shown here on the far left. Notice this gives us dt equals one divided by the opposite of s minus c, and therefore the antiderivative is e to the power of the opposite of s minus c times t, all divided by the opposite of s minus c. At this point, because the upper limit is infinity, we should rewrite this as a limit, which I've done below. We replace infinity with h, which gives us m times the limit as h approaches infinity of, for the antiderivative, I did move e to the power of the opposite of s minus c times t to the denominator, which changed the sign of the exponent, we should make it easier to find the limit. So now we have m times the limit as h approaches infinity, uh, big F of h minus big F of zero. From here, big F of h, or the first fraction, approaches zero. And for the second fraction, e to the zero is equal to one, giving us m times zero minus one over the opposite of s minus c, which simplifies just m divided by the quantity s minus c. Recall m, s, and c are all constants, where s minus c is greater than zero, and therefore the improper integral does exist, verifying the existence of the Laplace transform. The transform also exists for some other functions that are not of exponential order, but that will not be relevant to us. Before dealing with uniqueness, let us note that for exponential order functions, we obtain that their Laplace transform decays at infinity, meaning the limit as s approaches infinity at big F of s equals zero. And now let's look at the uniqueness theorem. Let f of t and g of t be continuous of exponential order. 
Suppose that there exists a constant C such that big F of S equals big G of S for all S greater than C. Then it follows that F of T equals G of T for all T greater than or equal to zero. And finally, both the existence and uniqueness theorems hold for piecewise continuous functions as well, like the unit step function. I hope you found this helpful.